Now, this is what I'm pretty excited about. This is meant to be a pretty decent gaming tablet for a decent price. Let's check it out. So yes, this is the Oscar Pad 8, a device which is meant to be fairly good for gaming, but doesn't cost a fortune. So let's see what we get inside the box. And here is the box. So we have a USB-C to A adapter, very good for connecting keyboards or USB controllers to the tablet, USB-C charging cable and a power brick. And the power brick is rated at 10 watts. So it's not the fastest power brick in the world, but it could be worse, so not too bad Not too bad there. We also have a quick start manual, which is in various different languages, and there should be a SIM tool, ah, here it is. Yes, because this device can also accept SIM cards, and here is the device itself. So let's zoom back a little bit so you get a better look at that. Now the device has an IPS screen, and it is meant to be running Android 11. As you can see, it's got my fingerprints all over it, so it has been used quite a bit. On the bottom of the device, we've got two stereo speakers, which sound really good. We've got a dock, so you can connect it to a USB keyboard as such. This side, we've got the volume rocker, power button, one microphone input, USB-C input, and the SIM card tray, which you can also put a micro SD card into. We've got another microphone over here, a headphone jack, very nice to see that on there, and that's your lot. On the front of the device, we have got the front-facing camera, only 2 megapixel. And on the back of the device, we've got the rear camera, only 5 megapixels, so the cameras are not that great. And the back of it is aluminium, apart from up here, which is plastic, probably because the antenna is there. Now, let's take a look at the specs on the back of the box and see what this is meant to be. So, according to the back of the box, it's running Android 11. It's got a 1200 by 1920 FHD IPS screen, that's good. 6580 milliamp battery. It's a uh, multi-core, 1.6 gigahertz plus 1.25 gigahertz, uh, not too sure. And there we go, the camera's front, 2 megapixel, rear 5 megapixel. So, yeah, they're honest about the cameras. Apparently, it's got 4 gigabytes of RAM and 64 gigabytes of ROM, so storage space. Yeah, alright. Let's get this set up and take a deeper look. So here we are up close with the tablet and what I'm going to be doing is using the USB-C to normal USB converter so I can use an Xbox 360 controller to move everything around on the screen. That way my fingers won't be getting in the way. So first thing I want to do is to see if this device actually does have the specs which the box claims. So let's start up uh, CPU-Z and take a look. So let's just remind ourselves, the box says that this has a 1.6 gigahertz plus a 1.25 gigahertz uh, octa-core. Well, we can see from here that uh, this machine does have eight cores and that they are clocked at 1.20 gigahertz. So, yeah. Uh, and there's the eight cores there. Hmm, interesting. And let's move on to the next screen, and we can see here that it is a Pad 8. Manufacturer is Blackview. Hmm. According to this, the screen is only 5.22 inches, but that's definitely not true. That is a 10 inch screen. It's uh, 1920 by 1200 pixels, as the box claims. And it says we should have a 64 gigabyte of storage. Well, it says internal storage is uh, basically 53 gigabytes, but don't forget some storage is going to be used by the actual OS. So yeah, maybe that's correct as well. Okay, system, it says Android 11, just like the box claims. And the uh, last security patch was in April 2021. Okay, well, CPU-Z seems to say very similar specs to what's claimed on the actual box. So yeah, maybe they're telling the truth there. That's good. Okay, let's move over and see how it plays YouTube videos. And it's good to see that it has all the official Google apps on here. Many a time, these type of uh, cheaper devices don't have the official Google apps on them because basically they're using a knockoff version of Android. But apparently this is using Android 11. All right, so let's uh, just choose a video. I guess I've got to touch it. And uh, we'll go with the Toy Story one, which was uploaded recently. 
Oh, bloody ads. Okay, so that's a 1080p video running at 60 uh, hertz or 60 frames per second. Seems to be working just fine. Yeah, we can. Uh, yeah, we can uh, do all the usual browsing or whatever. Can we get full screen on? Yeah, not a problem. All right, so that's good to see. YouTube is working very nicely. Okay, but you don't care about that. What you want to see are the games. Well, let's check out some games. So we'll go into the games folder here, and as you can see, I've uploaded a couple of uh, Android games as well as a load of emulators. So let's check out uh, Horizon or Horizon Chase and see how this runs on this tablet. Now one thing I must point out is the stereo effect on the speakers down here is really good. It does have a good sound to it. I'm actually very impressed by the sound quality of this tablet. In fact, what I'll do is I'll put my phone next to it and we'll record the audio in stereo. So hopefully this will give you an idea of the sound quality. So let's start off with the game. Oops, press the back button there. And I gotta say, this adapter, the USB-C adapter, is working like a charm. All right, we'll just go with uh, any old course, go with that one. We just wanna see if it runs smoothly, because this game should be at 60 hertz. And the analog controls are working. Nice. Alright, I would say that that is working perfectly fine, wouldn't you? Not bad at all. Okay, so we can get out of that just by just pressing the... Uh... Oh no, we can't. <laughs> that only works on emulators. Okay, let's get out of that. And let's start up another game. This time we'll go with a, a game in vertical orientation. Ray Force, or Layer Section, as I know it. All right, this is just like playing on the Sega Saturn. This is really good. Working well. Let's see if we get any frame skipping when the uh, 3D effects come into play. Oh, nice and smooth, just as just as it should be. Same here, no juddering at all. Looks good. All right, so as you can see, Android games seems to work very well on this device. But well, how about emulation? Let's check it out. Okay, so first up on emulation, let's take a look at Dreamcast. Will this run Dreamcast properly? Well, we'll soon find out. Okay, let's select the game. We'll go with Dead or Alive Final. Just in case you're wondering what Dead or Alive Final is, this is a, a fan-made uh, hack improvement of Dead or Alive, featuring new costumes. Uh, I think it's got some uh, stage adjustments and whatever. It's got some new music as well. It's actually a very decent hack. Okay, the intro seems to be working pretty well. Let's get into the game and see how that works. No problem. Yeah, that's working nicely.
Well, call me impressed. I expected that to be a jerk and skipping frames and whatever, but no. That's working reasonably well. Yeah, that's nice, smooth. Now the reason it's slow is because we're at the beginning of the game with a slow car, that's normal. This is what it looks like. And again, it's working pretty well, whoops. Oh, there's my brake. I was wondering where my brake was. Nice. Now, normally when you play this game on uh, emulators that are very good, um, either you get no rear view mirror or you got stuttering all over the place. Oh just really bad frame rate but uh that's nice and smooth isn't it well made a pig's ear of that one <laughs> okay let's drop a bomb and see if that slows it down no. Not a problem. Alright, well Batsugon was pretty good. Let's try and push it with some 3D. Uh, we'll go with Last Bronx because that is a 3D game that runs in a high resolution uh, 480i and uh, it has a lot of good art shading and things like that. But the uh, first thing I want to see is... Thank you. <laughs> first thing I want to see is if the FM video runs well. Let's check that out first. Now this is the video that Sega Saturn owners should show their PlayStation friends because this goes to show that the Sega Saturn can do clean FMV without an MPEG cartridge. But yeah, it seems to be running the full motion video just fine. Okay, let's get into the actual game and see how that works. Now remember I tried this on, um, I think it was the uh, R351 and um, it ran at like one frame a second. Bit of a glitch down there, did you see that? But it was completely unplayable on that device. Let's see how it plays on this device. Oh. Wow, actually moves. <laughs> that surprises me. That is not full speed. It is a little bit slow. But not too bad. Ah, oh, I think my buttons are configured wrong. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's not too bad, is it? It is playable. So this is a demanding 3D game on the system. So if it's playing this, I would imagine the less demanding 3D games would work much better. Now, I can tell you that Nintendo 64 on this device runs really really well. I'm surprised how well it runs. I was uh, checking this out before. Just just look at this. This runs really well. Look at that! That is so smooth. I 
I think that's running smoother than a real Nintendo 64. <laughs> that's lovely, look at that. Whoops. But yeah. So this machine is pretty good for emulation on the upper devices. Dreamcast works really well. Sega Saturn, yeah, reasonable. Uh, PlayStation, very well. PSP, very well. Um, and Nintendo 64 also very well. I think I've got the uh, brightness down on the uh, screen here. It's a bit dark, isn't it? Okay, so obviously, if it plays those type of uh, machines very well, then it's going to play other machines very well, such as the 16-bit machines. Uh, let's just take a quick look, and uh, let me just see if we can... Uh... And yep, yeah, as you can see, it works it, no problem. Full speed and everything. But um, that's not what I want to play. I want to play a game that usually has issues on emulators. And that is a ghost, uh, ghost Chaser, I think it's known in English. All right, where is it? Oh, yeah, Ghost Chaser, here we go. And this is a dark looking game anyway, so that's why it looks dark here. As you can see, it's running perfectly fine. Normally this game runs incredibly slow on bad emulators, but uh, yeah, not a problem here. Alright, there's our Mega CD BIOS, press start, CD-ROM, let's go. And let's see if this plays. Of course, you do have to put the biases on the emulators to make most of them work. Um, but some emulators do work without BIOS. And there you go, Sega Mega CD running. And of course, because it runs this, it's going to run Sega Mega Drive games just fine as well. So last thing we've got to check out on this device is the actual camera quality. Now, taking a look at the camera here, um, let's just put it on reverse camera so you can see my ugly mug. Hi. So yeah, the camera quality on this device is not that good. Um, in fact, it's pretty bad and I, I you know I accept that because on the box they did say it's a two megapixel front camera which is what you're looking at now and a five megapixel back camera but I did notice the face tracking was working then that's a good thing but yeah the video quality is awful and the sound quality from the microphone is even worse so um, yeah just check out this footage which I took uh, using this tablet and my phone at the exact same time and uh, yeah I can't even play the sound from the uh, actual tablet because it is that bad. All right, just check this out. All right, so here we are taking a look at the video quality of the tablet. And as you can see, the camera is not exactly the greatest and neither is the sound. And to make things extremely fair, on the left of the screen, you can, you can see, see a video. video taken with my phone on the lowest possible quality setting and the tablet on the highest possible quality setting. So I'll just move to a different room. Oh look, there's one of those mini Japanese spiders. The ones that are on EDF jumping everywhere. So I'll just move over into this room. And as you'll see outside, it is absolutely teeming down. Let's see if we can get the curtains open. So it is pretty dark today. And yeah, the difference in quality is 
pretty much noticeable, isn't it? So yeah, the camera is not exactly the best in the world. So there we have it, that is the Oscal Pad 8, a fairly decent uh, gaming tablet that runs a lot of things really, really well and doesn't cost an absolute fortune. As you can see, it's running a Nintendo uh, DS here and uh, yeah, it's running them fairly well. Also, we can play it side by side or if we tip it like this, we should be able to play it above each other just like in a real DS. But yeah, I'm uh, fairly impressed by that. And this thing, as I said, doesn't cost uh, that much. It's a fairly decently priced tablet. It's got a reasonable screen on it. IPS screens are pretty good, as you all know. That TV behind me there, that's IPS as well. Um, yeah, it's a pretty decent solid construction. The screen on the front is glass. We've got an aluminium back. Um, the only downside to it is that the cameras completely suck on it. That's the only bad thing. The cameras are terrible on this device. But everything else seems to be pretty good. Um, so yeah, I don't think you'd be too disappointed if you pick yourself up one of these pads. So I'm going to put a link in the video description down below. And if you want one of these, check out the links. Until then guys, keep on gaming, take it easy and enjoy your games. See ya.